So I welcome to you to our event um, in the framework of our Live Blue Lakes project. Uh, and this um, event is a part of the European Green Deal. So, um, sorry, it's a part of the Europe, um, the EU Green Week. That is one of the biggest um, uh, conferences, annual conferences of the European Union. And this year's focus is the European Green Deal. So, if you would like to learn more about the Green Week, I can sh later share the link. Um, to the Green Week uh, in the chat, and as this will this year, it will be a hybrid event. So there are also many further um, online events that you may want to join. So um, I would now like to um, introduce Elisa Skokera from Legambiente Italy. Legambiente is the coordinator of the Live Blue Lakes project. And Elisa will give us an um, 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 overview on the topic of microplastics and also our intention, what we want to do in our project to um, help to solve this project. Elisa, so you can Hi. share your screen. Good morning to everybody. Just let me know if you can see my screen and my presentation. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so I would like to, to welcome to everybody to this uh, event on microplastic uh, on the um, um, European Green Week uh, 2022. Um, um, as uh, Bettina just said, I'm going to present you um, the main uh, objective of the project, the Life Blue Lakes that is focused, of course, on microplastics. Um, I'm working in the scientific office of, of Legambiente, uh, and I'm following uh, more or less the, the scientific and communication part of this project. Uh, first of all, uh, what is the problem? The problem that we want to face uh, with this project is the plastic waste that, uh, as we know, um, we can find it all over the planet um, and um, it is a very big issue uh, um, just because um, um, the, when we found uh, big um, macro um, waste it's a uh, very big issue but, but we know that is, uh, it, is, it can decompose the, into smaller pieces uh, by the action of weather more, um, for the most, uh, wind, water, and uh, UV radiation. And uh, it's, it's decomposing this small piece of uh, uh, plastic that we, can co we call microplastic, um, uh, that are particles smaller than five millimeters. Um, and they have uh, different uh, uh, sources, but we have no, uh, for now, a uh, standardized definition in, for a legislative or no, normative point of view. Uh, we can dis have a distinction between primary and second secondary microplastic. Uh, it depends on the sources of this microplastic. Uh, the primary microplastic are um, uh, produced in the form of granules and pellets uh, and are intentionally added uh, to products uh, um, uh, while the secondary microplastic are the result of uh, the degradation uh, of um, biggest uh, um, plastic waste. Uh, the sources of microplastic are um, uh, a lot. Uh, they can come from the abrasion of vehicle tires and uh, road surfaces, uh, from uh, microfibers uh, released uh, from uh, synthetic tissues and textiles. Um, as I said, they are used uh, as additives uh, in uh, some cosmetics and cleaning products, um, and a lot of other, um, other sources. Um, this, uh, this waste, is, this microplastic, uh, have um, a quite huge impact on ecosystems and living beings. Uh, even if this is, um, we have not so many data to, to say that, but 
uh, we know that they uh, can uh, come uh, into contact with organic or uh, with aquatic organism uh, very easily. Um, they can be uh, they can act as carriers uh, for toxic substances uh, uh, or for other um, um, pollutants and also um, alien species. Um, and so they can be um, a very big danger for both the living beings uh, in the marine or aquatic environment, but also for the entire ecosystem. Um, the, the first studies uh, on these uh, micropollutants uh, starts in the marine environment uh, in the early 70s, but uh, um, as concern uh, the inland waters, uh, we have very few uh, data. So this, uh, uh, this project, the Life Blue Lakes project, uh, wants to monitor the situation uh, of these pollutants on the inland to understand the dynamics uh, of this problem and, uh, and also to test um, and to create um, some protocols uh, to be able uh, uh, to have a monitoring uh, process uh, uh, to be useful uh, to start also um, the, oh, sorry, I have to, um, so this, um, ah, sorry, I lost a bit myself. Uh, so this, um, uh, this project wants to uh, test some protocols to try to have some data to understand the dynamics uh, of these um, issues and of this uh, micropollutant also on the inland water. Uh, the Life Blue Lakes project uh, um, uh, works in two, um, in, in two countries, Italy and Germany, and it's focused on uh, five uh, lakes uh, as uh, pilot uh, areas, uh, three in Italy, uh, the lakes of uh, Garda, Bracciano and Trasimeno, and two in Germany, the lakes of Constanza and Kimsi. Um, the um, main project and object, uh, the main uh, objectives of the project are to support the local administration um, to straighten the commitment uh, um, of economic realities uh, through um, a participatory process um, to understand their point of view and to try to help them facing this, pro uh, this problem um, to reduce the input of microplastic uh, uh, due to the treatment um, of, um, of wastewater um, and mm, uh, through the development of a technical uh, protocol uh, to analyze uh, the, the water uh, inside and outside uh, of these plants uh, and also training the operator that works uh, in these plants. Um, collaborate uh, with the industries involved uh, um, in the plastic, uh, um, from the plastic point of view, um, to develop some solution to try to reduce uh, uh, the impact uh, and the quantities that uh, of microplastic um, that they can uh, discharge in lakes. And then, of course, uh, to sensibilize, uh, to prevent the spread of plastic waste and of waste in general uh, in the environment uh, with um, communication action and uh, raise awareness events, um, and to try to improve the regulatory um, on these fields, so on microplastics uh, in lakes and in inland waters um, in Italia and in Italy and in German, but uh, also at a European level. Uh, so just a brief uh, overview uh, of the of the action of uh, the main action of the project. So first of all, the uh, monitoring protocol uh, um, that we tested uh, in. Um, Lake of Trasimeno and Bracciano, but also um, in other lakes uh, in uh, in Italy. Um, so we try 
this, uh, this seasonal monitoring. Um, but in, in the field uh, with uh, Enea, we start this and uh, Arpa Umbria, we start this uh, uh, monitoring uh, some years ago. And uh, this project is uh, the, the finalization of this activity. Um, then we have the technical protocol um, that the University of Marche um, will explain uh, better later on the urban wastewater and uh, purification of water service tested on the Lake of Garda. Um, and then the involvement uh, of the companies that produce cosmetics, outdoor clothing and tires that are the main um, sources of microplastic uh, um, in, um, in waters. Um, so we develop uh, some information sheets um, different uh, for the three um, categories of, um, of companies, um, giving them some useful um, advice uh, to try to reduce the impact of their activities uh, on the load of these uh, micropollutants. And then uh, the involvement of the other stakeholders that live on the lakes, um, so um, at the administrative uh, uh, part, but also other association um, and the general society, um, including uh, uh, them in a participatory process uh, for the production of the paper of the lake. Uh, that is uh, a voluntary instrument uh, for the protection of the lake focused on micro, uh, microplastic. Um, so we involved uh, these people uh, in uh, some uh, round table to speak about their point of view and the issues that they have to focus uh, regarding this specific uh, uh, problem. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, they arrived uh, to the um, development of this paper um, with um, uh, that is a kind of strategic document specific for each uh, pilot lakes um, with different objective uh, to um, to try to protect the lake the lake from uh, this pollution. Uh, more or less, uh, it's, it's all. Um, then we will have um, more specific presentation uh, regarding this, uh, these activities. And I think I can give the floor back to Bettina. Thank you very much. Elisa for um, the introduction um, to our project. So um, now um, Chiara Braschi, also from Legambiente Italy, will give us an overview on the lake paper and how we um, try to involve su and support the communities in Italy in German and Germany to um, adopt the lake paper and um, to implement the recommended measures. Yes, thank you, Bettina. Um, I would like to present the lake paper. I am Chiara Braschi from Lega Ambiente, as Bettina said, and I would like to present the lake paper we drafted within the, lake, the Blue Lakes projects. As Elisa said before, I would like to start describing the study area of the project which involve uh, five uh, lakes, three Italian lakes, two German lakes. As regards Italy, the lake are Garda Lake, which is localized in the north of Italy, between three regions, Trentino Alto Adige, Veneto and Lombardia, is a big lake um, main, with the main, uh, is, a, is, a, is a, particularly important for tourism activity. The second one is Trasimeno Lake, which is localized in Umbria region in the cent center of Italy. And is a very important uh, hotspot for nature conservation for tourism as well. And finally, the last one is Bracciano Lake, which, which is localized in Lazio region. 
quite close than Rome, is a lake which is important as a drinking water reservoir and it is also important for nature conservation and tourism activity. As regards East Germany, the two lakes are Constance Lake, which is localized in the international border between Germany, Switzerland and Austria. And the Spracciano Lake is important for as a drinking water reservoir and it is also a natural conservation hotspot and important for tourism. Um, the last one is El Chimtsi Lake, which is localized in Bavaria. It is important for nature conservation and tourism. Now, what is the Lake Paper? Basically, it is a voluntary management tool for the protection of lake from microplastics. This document um, will be adopted by local authorities but also by the communities, for example, associations, citizens, tourist services living around the lake. This document proposes measures to prevent microplastic presence in lake and how citizen public administration can be made aware of this problem and informed about the problem. The main aim of the lake paper is to improve the quality of life in lake community because of course, promoting the reduction of microplastic and plastic in the lake uh, will, uh, will um, improve the uh, natural status of the lake community. Finally, I would like to underline that we don't draft only one lake paper for all the, the five lakes, because as, as we saw before, they are very different because of the um, um, location for the characteristics, environmental um, characteristics and um, uh, utilization. So we drafted five different like papers and because this document is a lake specific document. Now, um, is it possible to identify, identify four strategic area of the lake paper which define four group of actions. The first one are activity addressed to promote the coordination between different kind of stakeholders living in the lake community in order to promote the synergy between them. The second group of activity are the activity addressed to increase the awareness and the knowledge on microplastic presence and how to prevent the microplastic presence in, in uh, water. The third group of activity are the activity addressed to maintain the natural status of the lake and to reduce the pollution. Finally, the first group of uh, activities are the activity addressed to support the paradigm shift in order to reduce the use of plastic. Moreover, in the German in the German version of the lake paper, we identify five R principle, the five R principle to uh, reduce waste. That say rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Um, rethink means to to find um, new way to avoid waste pl uh, plastic waste. Refuse means to support the draft of a regulatory intervention to avoid plastic waste. Reduce means to, of course, to reduce the use of plastic materials. And reuse and recycle are quite similar. They, they, they support the, the way to find the, the, the activity to reduce, uh, the, to, to find new way to use uh, plastic uh, production and to support the recycle system. Now, as I said before, we drafted five lake paper different for any lake. And we, we, uh, we did this through a participatory process um, uh, involving different stakeholders, uh, for example, public administration, companies, tourism associations, and, and so on. As regards Italy, for example, um, um, 
we, we uh, implement the participatory process through different steps. Unfortunately, due, due, due to the COVID restriction, we cannot implement in-person meetings. So all the meetings uh, were uh, rem remote meetings, but at least we, we had the possibility to reach more people than expected. So at the beginning, we organize an online presentation to present the participation process in the late paper. And then we create an online platform and we ask uh, all the stakeholders to provide a suggestion they, um, in order to um, a update the late paper, to improve uh, this document, and to provide a suggestion in order to to create a shared document. Uh, moreover, we organize three different, uh, we, we define a, a deadline in order to close the online platform. And after this deadline, we organize three workshops with three main kind of uh, stakeholders group that say public stakeholder, for example, public, public administration, in business activity, for example, hotel owners, uh, tourism organization, and so on. And the last group is um, association NGO. So uh, we collect all the contribution from these kind of stakeholders, and we organize a final work final workshop where we present the final version of the late paper. Uh, which are the expected results of this activity? At the end of the project, that means um, the at the end of September 2023, we want to um, uh, to have to obtain the adoption of the lake paper by at least 12 Italian and three German municipalities in the five target lakes. But we want also to promote this document in order municipalities in Italy and German, we want to inform at least 50 Italian German municipalities in order to increase the number of uh, adoption. Um, we hope at least 25 of uh, them will adopt the, um, the late paper. Finally, I would like to conclude, uh, underline the added value of this document. Uh, as I said before, this is a voluntary tool, so no mandatory rules are included in this document. It's a choice, and everybody can, can adopt this document. And um, when you adopt this document, you can choose what kind of uh, indication you want to support. Uh, moreover, uh, this document, as I said before, is a specific document uh, which was created for the lake reality, but this do document can be also replicated in other lake or country uh, uh, at national or European level, because any, any lake community can create a lake paper specific for its lake. Moreover, since we involve the stakeholders from the very beginning in drafting the lake paper, this means that this document is not a theoretical document, but this increases its applicability and effectiveness. Finally, it's important to underline that this document promotes a careful use of resources through a responsible, responsible production, consumption, reuse, and recovery of products, increasing the sustainability. Well, thank you for your attention. I give the floor to Bettina. Thank you very much, Chiara, for um, the insight in our work with the communities. So um, if you have questions, you can put the questions in the chat so that um, you don't uh, that you remember them and we have time for questions answers and discussions at the end of the presentation so then we can um, answer all the questions um, together so um, i would now like to 
uh, give the floor to Maria uh, Sigicelli from uh, Enea. It's the Italian National Agency for New Technologies, Energy and Sustainable Economic Development in Italy. And to Val Valentina Della Bella from um, Arpa Umbria. It's the Environmental Protection Agency of Umbria. And they will give us um, an overview on a standard monitoring protocol for microplastics, how this could look like and why this is necessary to have something like a standard monitoring protocol. Thank you, good morning. I'm going to share my screen. We can see it. You can see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Valentina Della Bella. I'm a biologist and I'm working at the um, Regional Environmental Protection Agency of Umbria Region in Italy. And for my agency, I am a technical reference for uh, Blue Lake project. As we, as we saw in the previous presentations, uh, plastic pollution is uh, one of the major challenge of our times. It's uh, a threat for environments and for human health. Plastic reach our table and our food. And uh, some estimates that uh, all of us ingest about uh, an equivalent of our credit cards of plastics per week. It's about five grams of microplastics and nanoplastics. So the microplastic pollution is a big macro problem that is small only in sites of particles. At European level, there is a standardized protocol um, only for marine ecosystems in the context of a marine strategy framework directive. But for freshwater ecosystems, the water framework directive does not consider the presence and the effects of microplastic on quality states of fresh waters. So, as we know very well, fresh water are not free from this problem. Uh, the problem is well known in the marine eco environments. And to date, for inland waters, and especially lake waters, there still are some gaps, especially in standards and protocols for monitoring, sample processing, and analysis. The pre preliminary studies on microplastics carried out in Italian lakes from Enea and Legambiente confirmed the presence of microplastics in these lake ecosystems. So one of the main objective of Blue Lake project is to design and test a standard microplastic monitoring protocol in two pilot areas in central Italy. As Chiara Braschi told you before, Lake Bracciano and Lake Trasimeno. <clears throat> um, to date, we just finished the sampling activities just in May and the laboratory activities is still ongoing. We perform seasonal monitoring campaigns, start in July 2020 and fin just finish in May 20, uh, 2022. We perform the sampling surface and column water uh, using two types of nets. You can see in the picture, we are using Manta net and Bongo net that are different meshes opening sites. The sampling of surface water, we perform um, dragging the net 
for a fixed time of about 20 minutes, dragging by a boat uh, along the specific uh, transect that you can see, for example, the transect selected for uh, Lake Trasimeno in Umbria, uh, that we selected for um, to be representative of the uh, lake surface. Uh, besides uh, uh, water sampling, we can carry out um, also sediment sampling along the beaches. And in particular, we uh, sampled uh, sand uh, sediments along the shoreline and along a transept that is the first accumulation area on the beaches, on each beach. Uh, according with the European community, we start sampling another lake beside the two uh, pilot areas, Trasimeno and Bracciano. We are sampling in 2022 uh, Lake Piediluco. Uh, lake Piediluco is the second lake for importance in Umbria. Uh, this lake is very different, you can see in the picture. Uh, from uh, Lake Bracciano and Lake Trasimeno. It's very similar to uh, subalpine lake with uh, uh, several branches. So we start sampling uh, Piedilogo Lake to, to test the Blue Lake microplastic protocol developed at, uh, in the project. We start uh, the first sampling in March and the second sampling is in program for next summer in July. The um, laboratory activities are still ongoing in progress. They are a little bit complex and it include um, a sieving the sample using um, sieves with different mesh opening, then uh, assorting a counting of macroplastic using microscope, a visual sorting, then include a classification into um, shape and color categories, different shape and color categories, such as film, filament, or foam, etc. And uh, at the end, a chemical characterization of microplastic that we are sampled uh, using uh, infrared spec spectroscopy. So next steps of this action include a data a development of a data management system, the dissemination of the, of the protocol, Blue Lake protocol, um, through uh, about the organization about 20 seminar at national level and include also the organization of the of a final training course dedicated to technician and personnel of other regional environmental protection agency in italy um, uh, with the main goal to share the protocol with other colleagues that are in charge to monitoring uh, to monitor the italian lakes and uh, also next step is the uh, development of a monitoring program information and to create a national network to share data on microplastics in lakes at Italian level, but also at European level. So I would like to thank you to all participants and I would like to thank you the National Global Fund to organization of the seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valentina. So now I would like to um, give the floor to Professor Francesco Fattone of the Polytechnic University Marche in Italy. And he will give us an insight on um, microplastics in 
um, drinking water and wastewater treatment plants and their work um, to make these um, plants even more sufficient, um, even more effective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bettina, for uh, your introduction. Uh, I hope you can see my screen, right? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Perfect. And good morning, everybody. Uh, well, the activity that we are carrying out uh, within uh, the monitoring, uh, the reliable monitoring, I would say, uh, of um, urban water survey infrastructure, namely uh, drinking water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants, is carried out uh, uh, merging uh, two important uh, uh, disciplines, competencies, uh, the environmental engineering, uh, uh, that is involving uh, myself, uh, Anna Rosebi, and Serena Radini, and also the um, ecotoxicology with the group uh, of Stefania Gorbi, Lucia Puttura, and Francesco Regoli. Why? Because, uh, uh, of course, we, are, uh, we have the need of understanding uh, uh, the conventional treatment plants and how treatment processes can optimize the removal, but also we have the need to be really reliable in uh, the data that we are getting uh, from this infrastructure in order to actually target the investment in, the, in this very strategic sector. So what are we doing and why we have selected uh, these uh, two main catchments uh, in Italy, uh, Le Garda and Le Casticcioni? Well, we started with Le Garda because of course it's the largest uh, Italian lake and it's very strategic because it is a drinking water basin. Uh, but also the anthropic impact on this catchment is very relevant. Uh, we have a relevant presence of a combined sewer overflow. Well, uh, we have hundreds of thousands of CSOs in Europe and even in Italy, this is an issue to be addressed. It's actually uh, been addressed uh, also by the revision of the Urban Western Treatment Directive. But we have also drinking water treatment plants that are using this uh, water for the production of drinking water. And we have wastewater treatment plants, small ones actually, that are uh, uh, in the same catchment. Uh, in addition, there are very relevant investments that have been allocated to the design and construction of the new sewer system uh, around the lake. And uh, it, the, as the lake is quite big, uh, we have different water utilities that are managing the water infrastructure on the east, north, west side of the lake. This means that harmonization and uh, proper governance is highly needed. And last but not least, uh, this lake is uh, highly relevant for the presence of uh, tourists. Uh, we have millions of presences each year in Lake Garda. Uh, so uh, together with that, Lake Casticcioni is a smaller lake, is in Marca region. It's an artificial lake that is used uh, as a strategic uh, drinking water uh, reservoir. And uh, even in this case, we don't have a, a relevant anthropic impact. Uh, but we have relevant uh, uh, natural uh, phenomena that are going to influence the water quality. So, uh, and this is located in a region that is uh, often water scarce. Um, what we want to do is uh, not only to monitor and to quantify the occurrence and removal of microplastics, but also uh, to promote good practices uh, uh, in uh, uh, this catchment. Uh, mainly addressing the operators of the water utilities, but also engaging stakeholders because, uh, of course, uh, uh, regulation is driving the actions of the operators. And finally, we want to give insights about uh, the best um, operation units that should be applied to optimize the movement of microplastics. Well, uh, even in, a, in this case, uh, uh, life of the lake didn't start from scratch. Uh, we had the previous relevant experience uh, of monitoring uh, uh, microparticles in, uh, and microplastics in uh, wastewater treatment schemes. This is one example of one paper that uh, we published uh, together with the colleagues of ecotoxicology. And uh, uh, we found uh, not only the number, but also the type of microplastics. Uh, and uh, we also compared uh, conventional treatment versus uh, uh, membrane-based treatment, uh, uh, finding uh, results that were in line with the literature actually also, uh, conventional treatment plants are able to remove even more than 80% of microplastics. This percentage is increased when we have a membrane-based microplastics um, treatment plant, sorry. Uh, but this means that uh, then it's important to 
properly managed larger to understand what is the fate of these plastics once these are um, uh, concentrated into the sludge that is finally disposed. So uh, within Blue Lakes, we were able to upgrade our activity uh, and to move also to drinking with the treatment plants. Uh, and um, we have delivered uh, the technical report uh, and the operative manual that is uh, uh, highlighting uh, uh, the efficiencies of different treatment processes. But to do so, uh, we were also highlighting how it's important to have a proper uh, sampling protocol. Uh, because the challenge here is that concentration is very low and variability is very relevant. So it's important to have a sampling protocol that is considering the, the variations uh, of quantity and quality of water. Uh, so it is uh, filtering a high amount of uh, uh, water of wastewater uh, using, of course, uh, uh, proper sampling uh, uh, materials. And here you can see, uh, depending on the um, sampling points, uh, uh, the type of sample, the minimum volume, uh, and the minimum number of samples in order to get uh, reliable data. So thanks to this, uh, uh, we were uh, sampling different plants. And here you can see the evolution of our sampling. Uh, actually, within the Blue Lakes, it was not planned at the beginning, but we understood that there was a need to develop and construct an original uh, automatic sample. That is quite easy. You can see here the 3D. Uh, drawing, uh, uh, but is allowing us to uh, filter relevant amount of wastewater. We have 50 and 25 micron uh, uh, filters here. So thanks to this, we are reducing the efforts, the manual efforts, uh, and increasing the reliability of results. Further to this, you can see as we uh, have installed uh, uh, steel filters, uh, and this was done together with the operators, just to show the operators that. Uh, Sampling microplastics is not difficult. They can manage this uh, operation by themselves. But of course, there is a need of being uh, uh, of paying attention to the materials and to the protocols. And here you see some examples of uh, uh, our activity in real drinking water treatment plants, for example, in Lake Gata catchment. What are the plants that we monitored? Well, we selected the plants on the basis of the treatment train. And here you see uh, examples of three different treatment plants, drinking water treatment plants that were using different technologies uh, from uh, uh, acrylic carbon to ozone in one side, in castrazioni, uh, to membrane technologies uh, in uh, um, Brenzone Castelletto and Legarda catchment, uh, up to filtration and ozonation uh, again in Molinetti and Legarda. So we have a very good uh, data set uh, with the efficiencies from different treatment technologies for drinking water production. And here you see uh, how sampling was organized, cartridge filter 50 microns, and uh, uh, the sampling uh, not only infant and deferent as quite often is done, but in different, uh, um, in the different um, treatment stages. So by this way, we, will, uh, we are able to carry out uh, mass balances and to understand the efficiencies of the different treatment units. Um, in addition, we were uh, also analyzing not only the drinking water, but also wastewater treatment plants uh, and uh, in the Lake Garda catchment mainly. And here you can see some examples of our activities. Even in this case, we were analyzing uh, in and out of different treatment units by using our um, uh, automatic sample that was properly designed for this activity. So uh, finally, as um, you can see, the sampling has been uh, uh, optimized and we think we are ready to transfer this knowledge to the operators. It actually, as you can see here in this picture, they were already collaborating with us in the sampling. So uh, we tested on field their capacity to carry out alone this activity. Uh, then what about the uh, type of um, materials, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, use non plastic material. And uh, when these plastic material are used, of course, this has to be have to be characterized in order to exclude them from the results. Uh, it's important to consider closed sampling system versus uh, system that are exposed to the environment to avoid contamination of the sample. And it's always important to have blank samples that are uh, uh, collected uh, in order to have uh, a benchmark in the, in the characterization. 
Here you see some detail about the new prototype or automatic sampler. Actually, this is a quite uh, easy construction setup uh, that is including filters, uh, stainless steel filters of 50 and 25 micrometers. And thanks to this, uh, we are recording the flow rate uh, and the volume of water that is filtered. And uh, we can here then uh, characterize uh, higher uh, quantity of water, so being more reliable in the final results. So uh, here you see an example of installation. Uh, we have uh, volumes uh, that are uh, a few cubic meters. So depending on the loading that is uh, the concentration that is uh, in, in uh, wastewater. And uh, we are able to cope also with the relevant fluctuations in order to have uh, average samples over days. After the sampling, uh, a very important uh, procedure that is carried out in the lab of ecotoxicology, Stefania, Lorby, and Lucia Pitur are working on that mainly. Uh, we have uh, the recovery from uh, sieves, uh, uh, and uh, of course, steel or grass material are used to recover and store the sample, and the storage is at four degrees. Here you see the, um, how the uh, material is recovered uh, from sieves in one um, example and from cartridge filters in the other example. Uh, then we have a vacuum filtration uh, that you can see here uh, where cellulose filters have a pore size of eight micrometers. Digestion of the organic matter uh, with H2O2 diluted at 15% in notable water and digest digestion at maximum 50 degrees. This was uh, uh, actually in line with uh, uh, some literature results, and this was also an optimized method with the experience again of uh, the group of ecotoxicology. And then we have a separation from the density gradient uh, um, that is uh, carried out, as you can see here in this figure. So, uh, not necessarily all the samples uh, are uh, treated according to all the phases uh, and in the same order. This depends really on the type of sample and on the types of uh, matrix that is uh, um, analyzed. So water, wastewater, sludge are different. So depending on the type of material, different uh, processing is needed. Um, and in particular, uh, sludge and, uh, and water, of course, they will need a very careful uh, processing. In terms of uh, processing here, you can see uh, the protocol that actually has been also tested to be uh, carried out in labs that are available at water utilities premises, because finally we want the operators to be um, able to do this uh, kind of analysis in their labs. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the characterization of microparticles and microplastics uh, uh, has been carried out. And um, the, filter, the filters uh, that are resulting from vacuum are uh, uh, examined in a stereo microscope. Then there is manual collection, uh, and uh, uh, the micro objects uh, are transferred to a clean uh, cellulose membrane that is used as support for the visual sorting. Of course, uh, this is uh, requiring a lot of efforts and time, and uh, um, and depending on the matrices, this can be a more or less long uh, activity. After the counting, we have also the um, characterization of the shape uh, and of the color. This is uh, very important to distinguish uh, natural microfibers, uh, textile, for example, from synthetic microfibers. And in this case, of course, the uh, shape and the colors is compared with the database that is allowing the, this um, um, characterization. Finally, uh, we are also characterizing uh, the chemical composition uh, by uh, identifying the type of polymer, the type of uh, material distinguishing between the natural and synthetic. And um, uh, for this, we are um, using a, a infrared spectroscopy that is associated with an optical uh, microscope. Well, we think that this will not be available in all the labs of water utilities, but uh, this is a final step for characterization that can be done as centralized activity from our uh, final approach. Uh, here you will see the um, validation and verification of the extraction micron efficiency and efficacy. 
Uh, and finally, we had very good results, even when very complex matrices were analyzed. For example, primary sludge or active sludge, the water sludge. So this means that finally, in spite of the complexity of the material, it is complex, but also very important because as I mentioned at the beginning, in waste treatment systems, uh, uh, microplastics are removed from the final treated effluent, but are going to be concentrated in sludge. Uh, we were able to get very good uh, uh, um, validation of the method. And uh, finally, uh, in terms of type of uh, reporting of the results, we have the average number um, in terms of uh, uh, concentration of microplastics per liter or microplastics per gram. But we have also the um, uh, distinction between synthetic and natural origin of the microplastics. And we have also the possibility of considering uh, uh, also the percentage contribution of one or other sources of microplastics and microfibers. Uh, if you want to have some uh, uh, results, uh, we will see that the microplastics and microfibers were detected in range of one to 20 items per cubic meter in the drinking water treatment systems. This is in line with the literature actually. And uh, we have a good database of uh, the efficiencies of different treatment uh, stages. Uh, relevant presence of uh, cellulose based uh, uh, microparticles uh, uh, was observed, uh, such as cotton and uh, linen, but also relevant uh, presence of uh, polyesters, polyacrylate, polypropylene, and polyamide was found. Um, even in terms of shape, we have uh, a high va uh, variability. And uh, when we move to wastewater as large, the variability uh, is very relevant. That's why it's very important to cope with this variability with a proper sampling campaign. Mm -hmm. All this in the last part of the project, uh, that it will be this year, will be transferred to the operators, mainly water utilities. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the schematic of the training mm -hmm. activities that we are carrying out. We are moving uh, from uh, the fundamentals of treatment systems uh, in drinking water and wastewater treatment plants. Uh, then we will move to the uh, topic of uh, microparticles and microplastics and microfibers uh, to show the main sources and the main characteristics. And finally, we will uh, target the analytical sampling methods. Finally, the operators uh, will be also uh, acknowledged with a Blue Lake label. Uh, this is a certificate to having joined us uh, for this training module. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Francesco, for um, the insight in these very um, interesting findings. So um, now I would like to introduce myself, <laughs> so which I um, actually forgot at the beginning of the um, event. So my name is Bettina Schmidt, and I'm working for the Global Nature Fund um, in Germany. Uh, and we are responsible for the implementation together with the Lake Constance Foundation for the implementation of the project activities in Germany. So um, I would now like to share my screen. Let me check. So... Can you see my presentation? Yes, Bettina. Thank you. So um, I would now like to talk about our activities, um, how to involve businesses, NGOs, and people to um, acti actively engage in the prevention of microplastics. So as we heard already, there are many different sources of microplastics. And um, in our project, we selected um, a few of them. So we focused on the one hand on the abrasion of um, tires on the roads, um, then on microfibers that are released when you uh, wear or wash synthetic textiles, um, then microplastics that are used as additives in cosmetic or cleaning products, and um, as well as the 
plastic littering that, um, as we heard already, is decomposed to micro and nanoplastic particles um, due to weathering uh, in the environment. So we started to involve the companies in a participatory process of the three focus sectors, cosmetics, outdoor and tire industry. So we had meetings uh, with representatives of the companies in order to see um, where the companies um, are at the moment with this um, problem and what is their intention to address this um, problem in the coming years. So we develop fact sheets on the three focus sectors and compiled all um, available information as well as best practice examples um, we heard from the companies. Um, so for other companies to follow. Um, we will organize um, a round table for the three business sectors um, in order to share experiences and information and also to jointly develop a memorandum of understanding in order to um, um, strengthen the commitment of the companies um, and that they sign this memorandum of understanding as a self-commitment to put the problem of microplastics higher on the agenda and to support, for example, um, further scientific, um, uh, scientific research to find solutions um, where necessary. So another target group are other environmental organizations. So we developed um, a fact sheet on microplastics in water bodies, uh, which is also available um, on our website. I can share the link later in the chat. Um, we disseminate information through our networks, newsletters, mailing lists, and on our website. And we also collect um, current um, publications and articles um, in the news section of our project website um, on the topic of microplastics um, to have um, yeah, a kind of archive where all the information is available. Um, we also offer a series of capacity building workshops uh, for um, NGOs and representatives of uh, companies or uh, administrations. Um, we have conducted already two of um, the capacity building workshops. The recordings and presentations are available on our website. And the next capacity building workshop will take place in autumn 2022. Um, as we heard already, um, plastic littering is also one um, very big problem because the, um, the plastic litter is decomposed into smaller pieces and therefore um, it is very important to also include the public, so citizens, the schools, tourists, um, and we started um, an awareness campaign in the two countries. Um, to make people more aware. We developed information flyers and postcards and information brochures with a lot of background information on microplastics and with tips how to reduce um, microplastic and plastic waste in everyday life. So um, there can be very simple tips, um, but if we all um, uh, implement these in our lives, um, we will have a great effect. So um, we, of course, highlight the consequences of littering of plastic waste. So um, we try to promote um, drinking of tap water in refillable um, bottles um, or buying as possible unpacked goods and food um, 
or to, for example, there are um, apps existing where you can check the um, this um, barcode on products and um, on cos cosmetic products, and you can see if um, these contain microplastics. And so you can leave it in the shop. And um, as it is always, demand de determines the supply. So we also try to reach um, people at public events and festivals with an information stand. We have a quiz to um, raise the attention of the people and um, try to explain um, about the, the problem of microplastics and what the people can do at home um, to reduce um, the emission of their daily life. Uh, we also publish articles in newspapers, uh, online magazines or consumer magazines in order to reach also younger people, we have a social media campaign. We have um, produced videos that are um, available on our website. And uh, we as well um, developed an interactive information platform um, where we um, provide information on what are microplastics, where do they come from and what can I do to reduce these in my life and as well as background information on the project as well as um, I can share the link later in the chat. So thank you very much for your attention. So as we are now at the end of the presentations, I have a look in the chat if we have already collected maybe some questions. Um, so Ajanta, do you want to um, address um, the question yourself to Chiara so that we open now the discussion? Or shall we just uh, read it for you? Okay. Uh, thanks, Bettina. Uh, Hello, I, welcome. Yeah. So, yes, uh, it was a very useful, uh, in, in, I think, the dialogue platform that uh, was done because it's a very pressing problem that we all are facing all over the uh, world. Now, my question was that when we talk about uh, this, you said that in your objective of the lake paper, which I found was very interesting, which had come up through a consultative dialogue uh, with the various stakeholders, that you said that about improving the quality of life in lake communities. Now, what I have felt working in the communities is that sometimes it is very difficult for them to uh, directly link uh, the uh, the uh, microplastics, the effect to their to their quality of life, because all this uh, life component seems so um, discreet, not really connected in perce perceptions of the people. So that is what I wanted to know that what were the complications, what were the barriers you faced when you had uh, started working on the lake paper, especially on the quality of life as their perception from the local communities, the lake communities. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, maybe it was very uh, concise. Uh, what I want to say that we um, we involve uh, the main stakeholders, <clears throat> which were uh, not only public administration, but all only people living in the lakes area and mainly uh, people working in tourism and in business as well, and um, uh, associations and the naturalist association. Uh, so we um, uh, involved them from the beginning because we want to increase the, um, the principle, the, we, we want to uh, increase the idea that uh, the lake is uh, of everybody and then everybody can do something in order to improve the area. Uh, Lake Ambiente has a lo long time story with uh, um, reduced plastic on the sea. 
So we had we had long uh, experience in working with the municipality in order to identify plastic-free municipality involving all kind of stakeholders because uh, it's important to feel um, to feel people to do, um, support people in feeling that they they are part of a community and then they can behave in order to cooperate with the other in order to improve the quality of lake uh, i mean this this approach is not simple in every reality of course uh, we had some difficulty is difficulties especially in the garda lake because it's a very big lake involving three regions so many municipalities some economic uh, uh, interest in uh, um, uh, over in um, uh, you say in uh, support tourism uh, um, um, not always uh, ecological friendly i mean <laughs> because it's very uh, it's a very demanding for tourism so um, but for example, in Trasimeno Lake, in Bracciano Lake, we observed a very strong participation on behalf of uh, natural association, uh, which were very interested in uh, improving the, the quality of uh, water, the quality of beach, because if the beach are uh, free of pollution, uh, it's... Um, this is uh, increase the um, the, the um, uh, natural conservation of the area and improve the tourism uh, um, request. And so, in this way, uh, the lake paper will improve the the um, life quality of the lake area. I hope I I, I reply your question. Uh, Okay. Also, I have a question to you, Bettina, that you talked about refillable bottles and uh, tap water. I myself, when I, I travel with these sort of bottles, but it's very difficult to get refillable when we are traveling. We're always traveling in the field. So maybe I don't know water ATMs like of a thing uh, because now there is a big industry for uh, this plastic water, these bottles. Uh, so there is a very big industry. A lot of big players are playing there, and uh, and it's also extracting the underground water like anything. So maybe I don't know. Just like we have washrooms in you uh, know in a series of areas, like maybe in coming days. Uh, there can be water ATMs where people can go with money, they can refill, but now there, is, there are no places like that where you can really refill. You have to buy a plastic water bottle, take the water from there and fill your bottle because that's the way it happens now. So, uh, so I would like to know that how do you um, take this as a solution to the next generation with so um, I think we have to find all together a way out of um, this tremendous amount of single use plastic. So it's, um, um, yeah, so in Germany, we um, already have, uh, in many cities, we have um, like, um, um, drinking water um, stations where you can um, either have some water to drink or to um, refill a bottle that you bring with you. And um, yeah, I know that there are um, organizations that only focus on this topic to promote that to um, other cities in Germany and in Europe. Um, and hopefully also um, soon worldwide to um, make drinking water available everywhere so that we can, um, yeah, um, have, that we have a chance to refill our bottles. So, and um, yeah, it's, um, 
yeah, as I said, we have we have to find a way out of this um, this uh, huge amount of plastic waste we produce, especially here in Germany. So, and uh, we have already um, um, systems so um, that you have um, bottles that are uh, made out of glass or um, plastic that you um, like a deposit system yeah, that you um, you buy the filled bottles and you give them back um, and they can be reused and refilled and then you can buy new ones for different um, uh, kinds of bever beverages um, and I think that is an alternative to um, if you, of course, you cannot um, provide uh, different types of drinks at the street. Um, but um, I think that is a way out. And we, um, yeah, we have to promote this and to use it, of course, uh, the system so that um, there are more offers um, uh, for other people to use. Are there further questions or maybe remarks? I, if, if I can, Bettina, I would like to ask to these last questions. Because also in Italy, we have these um, water houses uh, which you can go and refill your bottle or um, even if it's plastic or not. Um, but also here, more or less, I think, also in, in Germany, the tap water, it's good to drink, more or less everywhere. Uh, so maybe we are lucky for this, but uh, uh, on the other hand, that it's also one of the um, um, most uh, um, uh, consumer of uh, plastic bottle for water in the world so um, we as Le Gambiente but also uh, with this project with Lush Blue Lakes um, and also with other projects and campaigns um, we are trying to promote uh, uh, the use of uh, tap water and not the one from the single use plastic bottle um, from a, a community Com communication point of view and cultural uh, point of view because people are afraid that water from the, the tap it's not good but it's not like this um, here at least so it's a very big challenge for us to try uh, to reduce the use of this uh, of this item So um, maybe one further remark. So here in Germany, we have two types of deposit system. So the one is that you have um, also to give back the single use plastic bottles, um, but they are just uh, crashed and um, um, yeah, cut into small pieces and they um, uh, use that as a raw material for um, for recycling plastic. Um, and the other deposit system is that um, you give back the um, the bottles, the empty bottles, and they are cleaned and refilled again. And then you can, um, and they are um, reused. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know how many times, but um, so um, and um, so this is the one that is, of course, more effective to save plastic waste so that you refill the either glass or plastic bottles and um, so that you have a circulation and um, so that we um, get away from all this um, single use. Um, single-use plastic. So do we have any further questions? So maybe I would have a, a questions, 
question to Francesco. Um, so as we have also participants here from countries that are less developed than uh, Italy and Germany and also have a less um, developed system of wastewater treatment plants. So do you see um, any chance that um, the system you are um, developing is also possible to be um, used in, um, so can it also only be um, combined with a very developed um, sewage treatment plant as we have it here in Europe? So Francesco said that he might be um, also to hop to another um, event. So maybe he's not available at the moment. Maybe I can answer. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yes, the, I'm uh, um, co-working with the, the group of uh, Professor Fatone uh, in the project. And uh, the protocol that we are developing is uh, um, also suitable for uh, not so uh, advanced uh, wastewater treatment plant and um, drinking water treatment plant. In fact, uh, we are uh, uh, analyzing uh, um, the um, occurrence of microplastics in uh, wastewater treatment plants of different uh, uh, capacities. So um, we analyze the wastewater treatment plant of uh, uh, let's say medium high um, uh, dimension, but also a smaller one. And uh, um, the, um, the sampling method that uh, uh, we are developing is uh, uh, designed to be uh, simple, to be used from the wastewater operators. And so even in less developed uh, um, wastewater treatment plants uh, or in less developed uh, countries. Um, the point is that uh, the analysis, the data analysis for uh, microplastic characterization instead requires uh, laboratory equipment and uh, um, expertise that uh, are, requires uh, time and efforts to be trained. But for the uh, monitoring and the, and, uh, the evaluation of the, the conventional treatment efficiencies that can be done uh, in uh, wastewater treatment plant and drinking water treatment plant of uh, uh, every size. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Serena. You're welcome. Yeah, so do we have any further questions or remarks? I have a look in the chat, but I think that we already answered all the questions we have here. So yeah, um, we can also finish a little bit earlier. So um, if you have further questions, you can, um, of course, um, send us an email. Um, I um, shared also the links to the project website um, where you can find all the publications uh, we have mentioned uh, during our presentations. So, and um, yeah, and if you need anything else, just contact us. We are happy to help you. So um, then thank you very much and have a nice day. And thank you for participating. Bye, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bettina, for the organization. Yeah, <laughs> thank you.